Hello, beautiful people, and welcome to Radiant Spirit, my podcast about self-love and living your most authentic life. Today, I am stoked to say I have got Nicole Love with me of Soul Gratitude, and I am Jennifer Gibbons, as per usual, and we are going to be having some lovely heart-centered conversation today, and uh, yeah, wanted to share what Nicole's all about. Nicole is an intuitive energy practitioner. And that encompasses a lot. Um, yeah, so honored to have you here, Nicole, if you want to share a little bit more about that. Thank you so much for inviting me and looking forward to this conversation. Um, about what I do, it, it does encompass a lot. I have been learning energy healing modalities for a long time. It's something that I needed for my own healing path. But pretty much everything I've learned as a practitioner, it was because it worked really well for me. And learning to connect with spirit and energy is, I feel, what to me. It's not that I was suicidal, but I was extremely depressed and didn't understand why I was here. And learning to connect with energy made life magical for me, made life like more real for me. Otherwise, I'm like, I don't want to know one even, anyone. you know, I couldn't find genuine people until going on this path. Yeah, I hear that so much. And I can see so many mirrors in that for myself. Um, and, and like I'd shared before, and you, I mean, we know each other outside of this, of course, a little bit, but, uh, I'm very new to my healing, my healing path. And that's the same. The things that really speak to me are the things that I'm wanting to dive in more to get a broader understanding, strengthen that connection so that I can share with more people. Yeah. Yes. It feels so good. And I think that that's our, our human evolution path you know, for all of us. And like you're saying, like authenticity coming into what is real for each of us and yeah. me deepening our spirits, embodying ourselves more and that feeds everyone around us, it feeds the earth, it deepens our connection to the earth. And I think that's what's going to bring us through all of this, all of these tumultuous changes that we're going through. It absolutely is. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Um Wow, there was so much you said there that I'm like, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. And there are so many things that I've witnessed that you that you share with the world to just, yeah, help us all get that unique connection that we have. That, that That's where my train of thought was when you mentioned that connection that we have and how um, it's going to be different for everybody. There's always like certain things that are going to speak to you individually and really resonate with you and certain things that just aren't going to be for you. Um, and I said this before, I, I know many times, and I will continue to say this, but, um, and, and goes just the same for this podcast, take what works for you and leave what does not. We are meant to be unique on these journeys. Yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is beautiful. And that's why us taking in what is for us and that unique frequency of love that each of us is bringing that in deeper and deeper and deeper and allowing everyone to reflect that, you know, really allowing everyone to grow into that. That's how we're all going to bloom together, expand together. Yes, absolutely. Wow. When you say that, I can see so clearly the mirrors that um, it's just all the, the different energies, the people, like how we all reflect off of each other. And while it seems sometimes that we're very alone in this and that, um, God, nobody would understand, it's we're all here to help each other in this and help each other grow and, uh, yeah, expand in love. That's the point. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And I was feeling so lonely, uh, like, before this weekend. The, the sun came out this weekend and it changed a lot for me. But I was going through this period of, like, oh, I'm tired. Why am I so tired? I'm sad. Oh, why am I sad? I'm like, oh, I'm lonely, you know? And then the sun came out and I, I go to the beach every morning with my dogs and it was just so gorgeous watching these rays come through the trees and uh, it was nourishing me so much and it was reminding me that I'm not alone. <laughs> and it's shining on all of these parts of me, like shadow parts, you know, and melting them away. 
And oh. so it, when time is hard, it's a time of going into more of the shadows and the deep dark places to uncover maybe some things that don't feel as good. And now then God spring is coming. And so we get to rebirth. <laughs> but we need those uncoverings, that nurturing deep dark oil so that we can be reborn again. The death and rebirth go hand in hand. Absolutely. The shadow and light. And, and yeah, there's things coming up as for me, as far as like, these feelings need to be felt and acknowledged, but not held on to. Um, and, and even, even the happiness and the joy, everything is fleeting. It, and these, these emotions, these feelings move through us. Um, but allowing that to melt away and just remembering that we are constantly surrounded by source and I can just picture where you're at on the beach and we live in such a beautiful place let's be real <laughs> but to be I mean rainy yes of course but to be able to like come out of that rain and feel the sun on you just evaporating that away oh it paints such a beautiful picture and we do that all the time and so definitely with the physical sun but also with imaginations you know that's to me that's energy work i like to visualize things and and it's real on an energy level it's real absolutely last night um i was so blessed to be able to participate in the uh, breath shop or breath work workshop that we did last night say that five times fast <laughs> that was beautiful um included sound healing breath work and a visualization a journey and um Reiki. I know you were giving Reiki when you were going around as well. Um, I was feeling that. Um, ah, beautiful. I know like energy work, Reiki. Um, some people refer to it differently. Um, I was feeling that and I, I really needed that so much for myself. It's been a very rocky week as well. And I don't know if it's the full moon energy or these torrential rains we've been sitting in or what, but been going the through big, it <laughs> yeah yeah and the breath work I love it's it's my newest healing modality that I've been studying it's so it's been a couple years and it encompasses definitely like hands-on energy healing and then like sound healing so there's a musical set that goes through the chakras um but I also bring in well, drum and rattles were always a part of it but I bring in my gongs and things like that too because I just love the frequencies of instruments and the things that they do for our energy and our bodies helping us release um yeah and just the biggest teaching of the shamanic breathwork ceremony is allowing whoever is in their journey to have their journey and so me coming in even with the sound being careful not to like invade your magic, your inner wisdom. It's, it's not me doing anything to you. It's just me holding space for you. So it's been the biggest teacher of, for me, I've been a practitioner, you know, for a long time, you know, wanting to fix people or, you know, that type of thing. But it's just really allowing myself to learn to trust this person's divine wisdom and mm -hmm. just being a witness to the divine wisdom coming in. And so that's why when it's, I have, I am a Reiki master, but as far as the hands-on healing, it's just coming and being that presence for your divine wisdom to come through. I love it. I was feeling the Reiki, but I don't know if you were able to tell. I was giving myself Reiki through that. So it could be when I felt you there, I was like, whoa, okay, we're leveling up right now. <laughs> it was exactly, yeah. yeah totally what I needed and um, divinely timed. And it was in honor of bringing in the year of the wood dragon, which felt so powerful. It was great. Yes. It was really powerful. Mm -hmm. Now, how long have you been doing the sound healing? The sound healing. Let's see. I started about 10 years ago with, you know, tone bowls and drumming and then just different instruments kind of sneaking in and the gongs most recently and that's been probably four years nice I got my first opportunity to play a gong at a kundalini retreat I was at um in the fall during over the equinox 
and it was my first experience and girl, oh my God, it felt so natural and it has inspired me. I'm going to be taking the sound healing course Are um, coming up in mid-March. Are you a part of that as well? I am not. No, that's ah. Jen, Denise, and Shamaya. Yeah. Yes. And that's going to be an amazing class for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, the dons. I mean, honestly, I, every instrument that I have is to be easy to play for anyone. Anyone can be a sound healer is how I feel. It's just an intuitive how is this instrument, how are these frequencies going to come through? It's intention, just like Ricky. Yes. Yes. I love that so much. I I had, I had realized now I've had on my vision board for a while, sound healing. And you know how the universe works. These things have just been like coming into my life. I've manifested a drum very recently. Um, got to play that gong, but uh, like tuning forks and uh, crystal singing bowls and all of this. I've got a collection. I'm excited to learn how to, um, you know, use them to uh, learn more about what the specifics of this tone, what is this? Um, yeah, I, I feel like each each vibration, each frequency has a meaning behind it. And I'm excited to learn those things. That's going to be really great. Definitely. And I do. The chakras all have a resonance to a different note and all the frequencies have different meanings and they can work with different organs and all different kinds of things. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, I'm feeling, yeah, again, really excited to learn. Always, I, I'm kind of the forever student, always really excited to learn. So uh, it came up divinely timed and um yeah, looking forward to it. I think uh, when it comes to sound healing, because you have are such a big part of like the um, the sound baths that happen on the equinox and the solstices, uh, and I know that things have changed with that. I know, but um, I always associate you with sound healing in the area. So anything going on, I'm like, oh, Nicole's gonna be there. <laughs> oh, I try to be there. I love being there. Up there. Yeah. Well, it's beautiful and powerful. And um, yeah, the and like combining that with the breath work or pranayama. Um, where did you where did you learn about the breath work? Okay, so it was the end of COVID, and a friend of mine was telling me that she was gonna take this breath work class. I'm like, huh? Well, I could definitely learn how to breathe better and take it. And I wasn't expecting much. It was a two week online course, and it blew me away. Just, I really like being in my own room, breathing by myself, but the woman who created it, Linda Starwolf is her name and her team, she's really amazing people on her team and they held an incredible space and it was a global space. She has students all over the world. And so it was really fun being on Zoom with people from all around the world too. And so last year was a powerful one that said I needed to study more with it. And, and when you study more, you get to go travel the world on these retreats, basically. And so Mexico was the first one. And it was just so profound. And Star Wolf, she's 70. And she's a powerhouse, you know, like way more energy than me, that's for sure. And she's so spunky. And I'm just so super wise. And just been you know, so many life experiences and has always been psychic, you know, she's been struck by lightning twice. It's, she's just had <laughs> yeah. wow. experiences a few times. Yeah, so she's just really tapped in. When you look in her eye, you see the universe. You know, they're just like stars are in her eyes. It's wild. Um, so it holds this really deep and powerful field. I just love being in her field. And, and so going in person was, I mean, the depths that you could go in these shamanic journeys because everyone else is there for the depth as well. And, and so it's it's kind of shocking what comes up. And and then they've got a great ability to process, like we did the mandalas, the, sh the artwork, and then speaking into it more. We take a lot of time with speaking into our processes and bringing everything up so that you're not stuck in anything that might come up that doesn't feel comfortable we have to like you said feel it to heal it you know go through our things but then let it go and then just there's layer after layer after layer and she talks about it being a spiral path and so 
just going deeper and deeper into ourselves. Yes. I love I love that analogy and that it's not this linear path and like our race, you know, or anything like that. It's actually we're just moseying on deeper and deeper into ourselves. And and uh, that is deeper and deeper into source, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I think that there are um there's this misconception. And I know um I speak specifically from uh, my experience in trying to explain the journey I'm on with say my family, for example, of like, oh, you open your eyes and all of a sudden you're awake and boom, you're a different person. And it's like, oh man, no, this has just begun. And it's wild. It's, it's not like, oh, like a beam of light is just like shining on me now and everything's just sunshine and rainbows. Oh my God, it's the opposite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that beam of light comes in and it's like, oh, look at that. I didn't see that before. Like, yeah. I'm glad I had this beam of light, but oh, I have to go work on that now. Yeah. Yeah. They say like spiritual awakening. It sounds so like, I don't know. It sounds so light, but nobody really shows the meme of you like crying in the shower <laughs> of like what that looks like and just breaking down um because yeah. you do have to break down but it's a it's it's a process it's not it's a long process and it is a spiral journey with ups and downs and surprises around every corner Whew. it's the dangerous journey again and again and again yeah yeah that's right it's easy to die and it's not easy to be born either. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the beauty of it is, and like you'd mentioned in the breath work, when ev so many people are coming together with united intentions and the power of that and the mirrors that you can see in each other in these, um, in these, these times and places that are meant for healing, the power of that and how we can lift each other up in that is so awesome yes yeah places. they're they're my favorite places to be yeah it's like they're really they're my comfort zones for sure yeah, yeah. I they love hearing safe. that oh sorry go ahead <laughs> they feel safe to me yes yes um I feel very safe in those environments as well it took a while um, I think when I was initially introduced to, um, to healing ceremonies, things like that, I was very cautious and questioning everything. Um, but I had to break down first <laughs> and that's what it took. Yeah. And yeah. maybe it's so good to, you know, at least question a little and have curiosity, that type of thing, you know? Yeah. Curiosity is good and it's good to, um, you know, ha be with someone who you really trust. If it's something that's like new to you or scary to you, you know, like to going along with someone you really trust and letting that door open and being held by, by someone, you know, that helped a lot for me. Um, and now I don't, I don't care who's with me or not, but I needed that for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just, yeah, for people who are big, on this path like you were talking about being in a circle like oh yes the honor elements yeah I think being in circles is so deeply healing and transformative and you learn so much from each other even if it's a casual thing it's not a class or whatever just people coming together with the intention of focusing on spirit yes absolutely yeah it's this uh, movement I'm a part of and and um, certainly at a later time, I'd love to tell you more about it, um, but it is a women's group that uh, we we are coming together to manifest our dreams together by simply speaking them out and being able to talk about our dreams. And it's, uh, it's a beautiful, um, just a beautiful space where we get an opportunity to move through the elements and really learn how to embody that in our own lives. And it's been so transformative. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Star Wolf's teachings too are the elements and going through like each breath work represents an element and a part of the birth cycle. Oh, I love that. You're inspiring me to want to learn 
and I know I'm going to be taking notes and <laughs> putting that on the dream board. Yes. Breath work. My breath work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was my second opportunity. Um, that were just my second experience with, um, a, a breath work event. And both times I just broke down in tears and, um, Man, I, I didn't even realize I was wearing a little mascara yesterday. And afterwards I got up and I saw just, whoa, whoa. Um, in the future, no eye makeup. Don't <laughs> <laughs> Unnecessary anyway, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the tears really flowed and I really needed that. The release I felt after that was just, I felt so much lighter and, um, yeah, I, I I had been, like I said, having a pretty intense last several days and had been holding on to this knot of anxiety in my belly and leaving that. I was like, oh, it's gone. I slept peacefully. I even had beautiful dreams to notate in my dream journal last night. So um, and that's been a while. It's sometimes uh, they don't come through as clearly. So it really just kind of poof, opened some stuff up for me. It was beautiful. Yeah, it is so profound and it's powerful but the it's subtle how everything kind of bubbles up and integrates from them yeah i can still feel it today um grounding in for for this right now and and um i like to do a few breaths of fire and coming into myself and even with that i was revisiting that experience yesterday and realizing oh i have a lot more information that's still downloading and integrating from that and i'm excited to see what keeps coming up. Love it. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> this is great. Um, so I saw on your website that you have um, your inner sage. Is that what it's called? You have um, a course coming up? Yeah. So oh. inner sage is something I created, gosh, about six years ago. And it's based on the chakras, uh, but at each chakra, there's connected into a body part and, and learning how to be your own intuitive healer. And, and so through imagery, through meditations, going into each place for each class. And then also after that meditation, doing a guided drum journey. So I'll just drum for about 10 minutes and lead the class into a journey and so again their inner sage goes in and finds whatever the prompt is for their own healing and and then afterwards the last class will be like a nervous system tonic meditation and then a breath work so I'm super excited because I haven't taught this class in person in a really long time because of COVID and you know all the things and and it's kind of revamped a little bit. And, and so it'll be fun to see what happens with in-person this time. That is so exciting. And I hope that you do it again, because I saw it come up and I am starting my yoga teacher training really like it overlaps with that and time and resource money at the, at this time, it's like, Oh, the stars aren't aligning, but next time I am, I'm really interested in that. And it's so beautiful how you are really showing people how we are our own healers, but guiding people through this journey of, of helping them get in touch with themselves, with their bodies, with their chakras, and um, understanding how to really interpret the messages that our body is always sending to us. Our, our body is such a great tool to tell us how to heal um, spiritually, which, you know, all the oftentimes I, I I feel like you probably subscribe to this belief as well, but things that are manifesting it out um, physically in our bodies are are just a reflection of what's happening, what sort of things or trauma or wounds we're holding on to, and things we need to release through, whether it is our own ancestral or what have you. Um, and so it's it's beautiful. It is, and it's so deep that we don't really know what it is. How like this pain in the back of my hip or whatever what is that and then go in and look and whoa I didn't really want to see that <laughs> and now it's time to see it and really work on healing it but honestly some things take years you know because there's so many layers to really let go of and, and that's okay and it's being that 
softness. It's being that receptivity for your own divinity, for your own, again, unique frequency of love to come in and heal you. Because that's part of what I believe is that I believe our own unique frequency of love has created our bodies with also the earth energy. Like we're made of all of her elements and everything. And that we have chosen lineages to come into and those frequencies are there too. And then the lifetimes that we've had, you know, also, because there's a string theory that all the lifetimes are happening at once. And so all of those, our beings are huge. Mm -hmm. the information comes in with our beings. But some of those strings, I guess, like lifetimes that come off of us are master level beings that we can bring in to heal ourselves. And some of them that are in there are ones that have gone through a lot of trauma, you know, right? Like some people remember being burned at the stake or a lot of other things. And so bringing in all of us to come into wholeness, the light and the dark, all coming together. And Star Wolf's quote is the light, the dark, no difference, because mm -hmm. it really is all one. Yeah. Anyways, coming into that oneness for our really deep healing. I mean, this is this is my goal is to really be in my unique frequency of love, connect it and be held with the earth, be that channel of light here while I'm here and and see how deep I can get into that. Wow. Well, you are a stellar example of what that looks like to um yeah, just be that beacon of light to show others how it's done and showing up like that we the world needs more people like you and i love it so much thank you um yeah it's such important work that you're doing so important and it's it's all i can do you know it's all i all i want to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like that's how you know you're in alignment because it's what you want to do it should not feel like work but um, if it's bringing you joy, you are sharing that and letting that light shine through you so that others can find their own light. And yeah, it's so important and so beautiful and magical. I it's love really it. Important. And magical, <laughs> that's what makes this life exciting to me, for yeah. sure. Yeah. There's always a surprise. <laughs> yeah, there's always a surprise. And things always change up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, whenever I start to, um, and you know, like the brain likes to put story to what could possibly be what is happening with this or, um, and it's so easy to get caught up in that story. <laughs> I know, um, personally, I'm kind of terrible about that. But um, yeah, it, like it never ceases to amaze me. And I'm always surprised. And God, I got to stop and just live in the moment and be prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> coming back to that center place or like your love place again and again and again is what it is yeah yeah it's like oh wait come back oh wait come back <laughs> come back again and again right and there's so many different ways to do that and there's so many different um healing modalities that work to to do exactly that um so, you know, like it doesn't have to be just one specific way. Um, there's just so many and finding. And that's, why, like, that's why we're going to be learning our whole lives because there's so many and it's so fun to learn them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so fun to learn and then to share with other people that are finding passion in that as well. It's yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I'm really grateful to be on this journey. And I know that being on this journey is um, what our, brought our paths together, which is such an honor. Yes, me too. I know. It happened when I first met you. It was like two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was doing some sort of invocation or blessing or thing. And I remember Mother Mary may have been a part of it. I don't know, but... I remember her with you really strongly. You were in the room and I could just feel you and her together. Oh, that means so much that you say that. And at the time, I don't think I was aware of that. But now I very much call on her as one of my ascended Reiki masters. And she is very much honored in my home, in my space, in my heart. And 
That means so much to hear you say. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I love her. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah. When we met, it was, uh, there was, it, we were just coming out of, um, like COVID was still happening, but people were finally able to kind of gather with social distancing. And there was a, um, a meditation collective happening and it was like an 11 or 12 day stretch. And that was one of the, one of the exercises or the meditations that was offered. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was beautiful. That was great. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. It was a great offering that was created. I wonder if we'll be doing that again. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm, I'm putting it out there. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see if something <laughs> come together. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh, well, that's so wonderful. Um, yeah, I don't know really if you have anything else you'd like to add or, um, yeah. <laughs> um, God, I guess there's, there is another, I'm going to have more offerings for sure, but there's one other one that I'm really excited about that's pretty new. And it's holistic pelvic care and it's internal vaginal release for women who have been through like sexual trauma or birth trauma. And I do like sound healing and then also like, in the mouth and jaw healing and, and then energy healing around the whole body. But that, that's a big off that has taken like seven years for it to come in for for me to be able to do it legally. And, and so I'm excited for it to be here. And a really beautiful doctor in the community is backing my nursing license. And so that's how I'm able to do it. And oh. it's, yes, I'm also creating a nonprofit so that it can be affordable for people that they can donate to the nonprofit and then basically get that service. Yeah. So hopefully I'll have that nonprofit up and going soon. <laughs> Oh, that is beautiful. Oh my God. That's incredible. And so needed. So, so needed. needed. Wow. Um, I I have a, a little question I'm and and about like the jaw and mouth. And I'm like, oh, is that where we a lot of tension is stored there or from that? The jaw and the pelvis are totally connected. Oh. Here it's gonna help your pelvis. If you in your pelvis it's gonna help your jaw I see and so like TMJ and like being a um a, a rape survivor and um I'm wondering what the connection would be with my TMJ and grinding issues and the tension and rage I'm holding on to <laughs> I'm, it's connected completely in our wombs and our yonis are connected to our mouth and our throats like they're so able to speak our, our wombs open and soften when our wombs are open able to speak more too that's all totally connected wow that makes so much sense so much sense and when you just look at it like on it, even even the appearance it's like oh yes, well, exactly obviously exactly. yes and yeah. the tissues develop at the same time like oh embryos and fetuses yeah mm -hmm. oh. and it the tissues feel the same yeah interesting oh i'm learning so much i love this <laughs> it's wow. really profound work and it definitely brings up a lot but it's it's the good work we go in there and do it and and mother mary is one of my she's my big guide for that work yeah oh i can see that absolutely that makes so much sense oh wow so this nonprofit, i know it's in the works and does it have a name yet or as it's called Embodied Sanctuary. Oh, I love that. And is it is there also a connection to that? Or I guess it's still in the works, but will, will there be a connection through your Soul Gratitude website? Yes. Yeah, I'll, oh. I'll figure out how to do that. <laughs> oh, I just want to make sure people know how to find you and how to um, support this because it is something so important. It is, wow. yeah. And so I'm thinking of doing like breath work and then people can 
donate to Embodied Sanctuary for the breath work and also sound baths and people can donate to Embodied Sanctuary for the sound baths and maybe like some women's circles and that type of thing that teach women how to connect with their pelvis and, you know, their voice and all of the other things in between um, and to donate there. So just trying to figure out different ways to raise money for it. Yes. Oh my God. I, I absolutely want to be a part of that. That is fantastic. Um, oh, that's so exciting. I can't wait to see how this all, how this all grows. It's going to be amazing. Wow. Yeah. I, um, I just buckled out to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it will oh, happen in divine timing. Like the, it's already working. So, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I'm excited for that. Nice. Yeah, me too. It makes me yeah, thank you. This. Oh, good. Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Um, you feel open and receptive to me. Oh, yes. Um, I feel so honored to have you here and sharing this beautiful work that you're doing that I, I know is so important, so important to do the healing that we need. That's what this planet needs right now. And ah, oh. it is. Yeah. And so that we can all feel safe again too, to grow and expand ourselves. Yeah. Right. And exactly in this work that you're doing, um, it, the ripple effect that that has on society and the collective is just, it is powerful. It is so powerful. And um, wow, you're, you're just, thank you. Thank you for all that you do. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thanks for those thumbs up bubbles. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zoom just does that now. It's so cool. <laughs> you can do little hearts too. That's so good. I love it. You can't. Well, sometimes it'll recognize. Oh, okay. I sometimes no I do this in a meeting and it'll just like hearts. It's pretty cool. <laughs> love it. Yeah, I forgot. I was going to say something. Oh, yeah. The holistic pelvic care, a lot of it too goes into ancestor healing. And, and so it does, it ripples through time and space backwards and forwards for sure. Yes. A lot of this work that I've been doing, um, I'm, I'm just learning human design and I am, um, I have sacral definition. Is that what it's called? Um, but a lot of the main healing that I have to do, my sacral chakra has been giving me issues and basically energetically my body's screaming at me for attention my whole life. And I just, um, uh, like, eight months ago, 10 months ago, I had a hip replacement, which was game changer. I can walk now. Um, I remember at a sound bath one day, helping you carry a gong off the beach and my hip was, I was trying to just pretend this doesn't hurt. This doesn't hurt. But, yeah. um, you know, walking was always really painful for me. And now. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. And that that's process right there. That's huge. Yeah. And learning the connection and the ancestral connection, just, you know, through the different healing modalities, just like you offer doing like guided meditations and sound baths and just soaking in the frequency, but really allowing spirit to download these messages and what it is I'm clearing and realizing, oh, this isn't just mine. I'm yeah. healing for my grandmothers and my mother and, and on and on. And even for, I, I am not able to have children again, a part of my whole sacral chakra issues. I, um, I had a hysterectomy when I was 33. So I've always had issues with my sacral area, um, and could really use this healing you speak of. I, I know it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so connected to all of this healing I'm doing, but even though I don't have children and I'm not able to, I know that this healing I'm doing is affecting my nieces and the next generations um, and feels so important. It is so important. It's the big work. It's really big work. Um, and then I also just want to say, you probably already feel this, but even though the physical body part isn't there, energetically, it is still there. And so you can still do all the work. Oh, yeah. I... Um, I used to feel left out in women's circles with that feeling like, oh, I'm not really included. And it took me a while to recognize that, oh, no, energetically, I I really need this. I need this badly. Yes. Um, 
but it took a while to, to not feel excluded in that. And I guess sometimes I do a little bit, you know, when women are honoring their bleed and things like that, uh, I feel a little left out, like mm -hmm. left out of the red tent a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I could totally see that for sure. And I just want to honor you that you still have your womb, that your womb is still there. Thank you. Thank you. It helps to hear that a lot. It's very healing. Mm -hmm. oh, you're such a beautiful and amazing healer. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so grateful to know you. <laughs> grateful to know you too and getting to know you deeper. Yes, yes, yes. I look forward to, I look forward to getting to know you more and more as our relationship evolves. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for inviting me here today. Yes. Thank you for being here. Um, wow. Do you have anything else going on coming up or, um, well, um, it's like a lot. <laughs> wow. My, my offerings, like, those are my offerings right now. Um, but I'm going to go off and go to North Carolina and do a little more studying with our wolf in April and then going and made to the South of Spain for shamanic breath work and then Retreat there, and that's something that's really edgy for me because it's a retreat leader that I haven't met, but I know she's amazing. And you know, in a country that I'm so great with Spanish, <laughs> but I'm I'm trying. This is an edge I'm pushing, and I like to push the edges to learn more, deepen in myself. It's just a huge opportunity. Yeah, way to lean into that, girl. Heck yeah, that's so awesome. Wow. Yes. You've got so much going on. You're a powerhouse. That's my it's great. Piece. <laughs> so Thank cool. You. Oh my goodness. Well, wow. I um again so honored to have you here and would like to remind people to check out what everything Nicole's got going on at the Soul Gratitude website. I will definitely be posting a link to that. Um as usual, if anyone's interested in what I've got going on, you can check out everything at embracelove.life. I've got my um, readings, consults, my herbal products, um, and yeah, whatever, all kinds of all kinds of fun stuff going on. <laughs> but I'll include all these links. And uh, yeah, if unless there's anything else you want to add, I can uh, wish you a wonderful afternoon. <laughs> Wish you a wonderful afternoon as well. And let's see if there's anything else. There's just so much love coming through. So I hope you feel it and everyone else who's listening feels it. It was rippling out into everywhere. So thank you so much for bringing in the love. Yes. Likewise. Thank you. Mm. Mwah. Until next week.